questions, right? <laughs> Not going to be too difficult to figure that one out. But why? Why do we say and so many people are saying opposite right now, right? Mm-hmm. We going to get into it. All the way into it. By the end of the video, we're going to prove emphatically that rocks are in fact walking. They are in fact a custom that Israelites have been keeping since we've been Israelites and before we were Israelites, by name that is. And I'm going to prove that these cornrows people say we only allowed to wear were worn by people as early as the Egyptians and the original Egyptians who are the Nubians, aka Ethiopians, right? The same as your Afro, which you think only comes for the Negro, right? But then again, Esau has been calling us Ethiopians since they had a language, right? I brought that out a couple weeks ago. So we're going to get into it all the way into it. Let this do very quick. Okay. All right. Let's go. So, Judah, give me uh, number six and five, but don't bring it out yet. We don't have it on here, too. Let me make sure. It says six and five, right? Yeah, six and five. Beautiful. Okay. We in business. We in the money. Alright, let's pull up this blue letter Bible and get the game going. Alright. Brent, come shut the door. Hold on, yeah. Alright. Okay. Okay, hold on a second. This ain't what I'm supposed to be looking at. Let's get numbers. We're gonna bring this out later. Alright. Okay, so we're not gonna bring this out yet. Before we bring this out, I got a question. For all the lock haters, right? For all the lockhead haters out there, what law in the Bible? Is it that says, thou shalt not wear locks? Mm. Good question. What law in the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, whatever, says, thou shalt not wear locks? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I'm going to say. I could leave it there because y'all not going to have a good law. This is the type of question we ask to the Christians when we say, show us a Bible scripture that says God loves everybody, right? We asking you the scripture. I mean, we asking you that question because we know you're not going to find an answer to it. There is no law in the Bible that says thou shalt not wear locks because the Most High wouldn't say that, right? It's a hairstyle. Most High don't care how you wear your hair as long as you don't got blonde hair in it and you haven't marred the edges of your or the corners of your head, your hairline or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You haven't purposely made baldness upon your head. Like that's what it is. So, but since we got to prove all things, we're going to go ahead and prove that the Nazarite vow was actually talking about these type of locks and not whatever y'all trying to say a braid is as far as a lock is concerned. We're also going to prove that a braid and a lock are two different things and that dissecting it through the blue letter Bible in the Hebrew, we're going to find out that the lock they were talking about for the Nazarite vow and this consecration of the hair for the priests or the Nazarites, right? People who would take this Nazarite vow would be, um, uh, well, it would be a law that would involve them having to not lose any hair. And we're gonna prove with proof that you can't not lose your hair with braids or an afro. We're gonna get into it, right? So Judah, brother Judah, give me Numbers chapter six and verse five. Come. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 5. Make it nice and big for everybody. Well, let me. Yeah, I mean, dang, dang, gotta see. Um, 
You think this is big enough for shit? I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's big enough from over here. Let's make it just. No, that's too. I'm gonna have to deal with that. Okay, go ahead, I. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 5. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. Right. Until the days be fulfilled in which he separated himself unto the Lord. Mm hmm. Go ahead. He shall be holy, and he shall let the locks of his head grow. Right. Come on, keep going. It's locking. All the days that he separated himself into the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. Right. Keep going. We're going to read all the way to eight. Just read it smooth to eight. Don't stop. Come. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother or for his brother or for his sister when they die because the consecration of Yahweh is upon his head. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. Notice in verse 7, it says there's a consecration, right? First, we should probably find out what consecration is. So... Shalom, shalom, shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Waha, Waka, Kodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Bahashim, meaning coming in the name, Ba means coming in, Ha means the. Shah means name, Raka means holy, Kodash means spirit. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who will well and teach well because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And Shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And uh, pretty much, uh, you got this group called Sons of Thunder. They're pushing a doctrine saying that Israelites are allowed to have dreads and that dreadlocks is an Israelite custom. And they're trying to pretty much put into the Bible that Israelites had dreadlocks, you know, since the beginning and there's no law to say not to have dreads well first off when you read in the scriptures and it talks about this is the thing when you read in the scriptures and it talks about locks there that's not talking about a dread okay and this is what these dudes are doing they they got long hair and they don't want to get rid of it they want to they want to keep their their ways you know they don't they don't rehearse the righteous acts they don't fear the lord they don't want to cut their hair so what did they do? They try to force it into the scriptures. They try to literally put it into the scriptures. Then they ask a question like, what law is there? There, There's no law for having dreads. But the thing is, we look at where the, where the origin of it comes from. Okay, there's no law that literally that says, thou shalt not have dreads. You ain't going to find no law in the scriptures that's going to say, thou shalt not have dreads. You're not going to find that there. But we know when we go into the origin of it, the secular history of it, where does it originate from? It's a heathen custom. It's a heathen custom. Then they try to say that cornrows go back to the Egyptians. No, you guys are just forcing, you guys are trying to force your ways into the scriptures. And that's that's not how you teach the scriptures. Okay, so they went into this here. I didn't let them finish it because it, they took forever to fucking break the scripture down. You guys are playing with the screen and trying to get the screen right. Salakia. Salakia. Had a weird phone call just calling me for no reason. But getting back to the main point. They're trying to force it into the scriptures, man. All right, let's read it. They take it forever playing with the screen and taking forever just to do a breakdown. Just break down the fucking scriptures, man. It don't take you no goddamn 10, 15 minutes just to break it down. 
That's how you know that they 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 they're not men of the Lord, man. It don't take that long to just read scriptures. So let's get to the point. I'm gonna read all the way down. Numbers six and one. And Lord one is lessons edifying and shalom to you, sincere sisters that's listening in silence as scriptures command you to do so. Number six and one. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When either man or beast shall separate themselves to vote a vote of a Nazarite. Now they always try to use a Nazarite vote to justify that it's okay to have dreads, but they're not understanding a Nazarite vote. Talking about some no no hair is supposed to come out of your hair. When you when you keep in a Nazarite vote, that's not what the scriptures are saying. All right, when Samson had a Nazarite vote, he had long hair. He had his hair in braids, etc. Right, but every Passover, when the Passover comes, you have to cut your hair because you got to drink wine. Right, the scriptures say if you keep in a Nazarite vote, you can't drink wine. When when a, when when you keep a Nazarite vote, you can't drink wine. You can't drink nothing. You can't drink. You can't eat raisins, tomatoes, grapes, anything in the vine with a Nazarite vote. So if the Passover is coming in and you keep in a Nazarite vote, how are you gonna be able to keep the Passover? Yeah, you, you gotta think about that. You guys over there trying to put dreadlocks as a Nazarite vote, but even if dreadlocks was a not keeping a Nazarite vote, proclaiming to say that it was an Israelite custom, even if it was, you still have to cut your hair because the Passover coming. How are you gonna be able to drink? How are you gonna be able to drink wine? You can't drink wine with a Nazarite vote. You can't eat anything of the vine, tomatoes, grapes. It's hard to keep a Nazarite vote. So even if dreads was an Israelite custom, which is not, you're not gonna be able to keep the Passover, and you can't be around no dead bodies. I'm sure you dudes is eating spaghetti. Spaghetti got tomatoes in it. You wouldn't be able to eat anything, anything of the vine. So you gotta think about that. That's a Nazarite vote. When you go into me that word Nazarite there, right? When you go into the meaning of that word Nazarite there, let's get it. Strong's age 5139. Nazir. Nazir. That word Nazarite goes into the Hebrew word H5135. I mean 39, Salakia, which is Nazir, right? It says consecrate or devoted one. Nazarite, consecrate, one, right? Devote, Nazarite, right? Untrim. Consecrated, right? That's what it means to be consecrated. And when you go into the meaning of that word, uh, consecrate, right? It means to be separate, right? That's what consecrate means, right? It says Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord. That word consecrate, that word Nazarite goes into consecrate, which means to be separate, right? And it says verse three. It says he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. If he says locks is 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 keeping a Nazarite vote, that's pretty much what he's trying to say. But you can't use when the Passover. That's why I'm using the Passover as an example. If the Passover is to come in and you got long hair, okay, you keeping a Nazarite vote. You with a Nazarite vote, you can't drink anything of the wine. It says right here, he shall separate himself from wine, strong drink, right, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink with a nazarite bowl you can't do any of that so how are you going to be able to keep the passover you can't drink no wine you can't drink no wine no strong drink none of that with a nazarite bowl right and it says neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes you can't drink no wine so how the fuck are you able to to do that supposed to be keeping a nazarite bowl you can't you can't you can't drink no wine no alcohol you can't drink none of that not with no not keeping a nazarite bowl right and it says, nor eat moist grapes or dried. So you can't eat raisins. You can't eat tomatoes, grapes. With a Nazarite bowl, you can't eat any of that. Okay? But dreadlocks, we're going to get the true understanding of dreadlocks. The origin of it. And this is the thing. A lot of you Israelite groups, y'all see us go into the blue letter, which we do go into a blue letter, but we don't depend. Our elders tell us not to depend on the blue letter all the time because some things in the blue letter is not always correct. Some it, The blue letter goes off to a certain extent. So you can't just always depend on a blue letter all the fucking time. You know, our elders Ben said that. But these guys, they're trying to force dreadlocks into the scriptures, which dreadlocks ain't in the scriptures. Now, there's no, you ain't going to find a law that's going to say thou shalt not have dreads. You got you to gotta be fucking s smart, man. You can't be simple. All right? You got to be fucking smart. There's no, there, you ain't going to see on the Mosaic law, thou shalt not have dreadlocks. Just like tattoos. The scriptures say not to have any marks in the flesh, right? But there's no scripture that's going to say thou shalt not have tattoos. It's not going to say that there. You just, you just got to be fucking smart when you read the scriptures, man. If not, you're going to be dumb. You're going to be dumb. Verse 4, it says, all days of his separation. This is a Nazarite vote. A Nazarite vote is having 
plaits, braids. That's a Nazarite bowl. All right, we're going to prove it. It says, all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the corn kernels even to the husk. So with a Nazarite bowl, you can't eat anything of the vine. Tomatoes, grapes, you can't eat anything of the vine tree. All right, with a Nazarite bowl. Verse 5, it says, all the days of his bowl, of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. Right, like Samson. He had you had Samson. Samson wasn't even the only one that kept a Nazarite bow. I believe you had you had Samson. You had uh, I believe it was uh, you had John the Baptist, and I believe you had uh, Apostle Paul. He kept a Nazarite. They all kept a Nazarite bow, right? Which was plaits, braids. That's what they had. Plaits, braids. They kept a Nazarite bow. Okay, but in today's society, you're not going to be able to keep a Nazarite bow. You're not going to be able to keep a Nazarite bow. It's, it's very challenging to keep a Nazarite bow, to have your hair long and all of that. It's hard to keep a Nazarite bow. The Passover come in, you keep a Nazarite bow, you're going to have to fucking cut your hair because you can't drink no wine with a Nazarite bow. You can't eat anything of the vine or drink any wine, any strong drink, no liquor. You can't drink any of that shit with a Nazarite bow. So just by you trying to do a lesson to try to put dreadlocks and say that that's a Nazarite bow, you're already going off because we can't keep a, you can't keep a Nazarite bow perfectly. You can't. You can't, not in this society. It says, all the days of his, it says, all the days of the vote of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the, until the days be fulfilled in the which he separate himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his head, right? Let the locks of his hair of his head grow. Now, you, this is a stumbling block to a lot of Jakes because they'll read verse five and say, see, that's talking about dreadlocks. That's not talking about dreadlocks. Okay, that's not talking about dreadlocks. That's not talking about that. Verse six, it says, "All the days of his, all the days that he separate himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body." So with a Nazarite bow, you can't be around no dead bodies. You can't go to no funerals. You can't do any of that with a Nazarite bow. You can't be around any any dead bodies, right? Verse seven, it says, "He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother." For his brother or for his sister when they die. So if they were to pass away, let's say for example, you keeping a Nazarite vote, right? He's saying he's keeping a Nazarite vote. This for example, because a lot of these guys that's keeping dreads, they 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 try to keep it because they don't want to cut their they don't want to cut the dreads. Dreads is dreadlocks is a heathen custom, but they don't want to get rid of the long hair. They want to keep the long hair. All right, that's all they worry about is, is having long hair. So they try to indoctrinate it and push it into the scriptures to say, see, dreads are in the scriptures, but dreadlocks is not in the scriptures. All right. Dreadlocks is not in the scripture and it's not Israelite custom. And they try to use Samson as an example. He had dreads. Samson didn't have dreads. OK, and we're going to prove that. But just getting to the point. Right. It says he shall. It says he shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother. Or it says for his brother or for his sister when they die because the consecration. Right. The consecration of his power is upon his head. The consecration, the separation, right? To be separate, right? That consecration there, right? Get it again. Go into the meaning of the word consecration, right? Nazir, consecration. Crown, separation, Nazarite ship. See, that word consecrated, it means to be separate. That's what it means. That's what consecrate means. It means to be separate. Right. Verse eight. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. Right. And that word holy. Right. It means to be what? Sacred. You see, holy, holy one, saint, set apart. Right. That's what the word holy means to be set apart. So when you keep an, a, 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 a Nazarite bow, right, you're 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 having a bond with the Lord. All right. The consecration. Right, you're having a separation, right? So you can't with a Nazarite bow, you can't eat anything in the vine, can't eat no tomatoes, no grapes, right? You can't be around any dead bodies, none of those things. Okay, I'm not gonna make this long. I just want to read that little part there. All right, and then we're gonna prove where do dreadlocks come from. We did lessons on that many times, but I'm just doing one because you got these guys. I got the sons of thunder. They're going off on the scriptures. You guys are trying to put dreadlocks into the into the scriptures, and it's not in the scriptures, man. You cannot keep dreadlocks. Dreadlocks is not an Israelite custom. You guys want to say what law says that? Of course, it ain't gonna be no law that say thou shall not have dreads. Come on now, thou shall not have dreadlocks. You're not gonna see that in the Bible, man. You can't be fucking s s simple. You gotta have. You gotta. You gotta be using your y'all got y'all jakes. Don't be using y'all fucking heads, man.
Excuse my friends. They, they don't use their heads. They don't be using their head, man. All right. I think it's uh. So like it. I think it's verse. Um. I'm trying to find that part where. This is when um, Salakia. Salakia. Judges 16, 13. Now, listen to this. Because you got a lot of Jakes that believe that Samson had dreadlocks. Which he didn't. He had braids. He had plaits. Judges 16, 13. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound and this is what samson said unto delilah delilah was a philistine she was a, a hamite she was a philistine all right the philistines those are hamites right and it says and he said unto her if thou weavest weavest the seven locks of my head with the web now when you go into the meaning of that word locks there and this is a stumbling block now we use this but we don't always just depend on this because now we're going to after i get the meaning of that word lock there, we're going to go into the entomology of the meaning of the word plat, and then we're going to go into the secular history. It's a big difference than just going into the scriptures only. And that's what they do. They just go into the scriptures only. Now, they probably might have some secular history in there, but you can't follow every single secular history because some of it is false information. You got to be careful for what secular history you're getting because Esau got a lot of deception of secular history. You got to know what is true and what is not. You can't just... Just gravitate to any fucking thing. Because Esau will say anything. You know, you can't trust in every fucking thing he say. You know. Now, when we go into the meaning of that word locks, it goes into H4253, right? Which is Malapa. Strong's H4253. Machlafoth. 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 But it's actually Malaf, la Malapa, right? Which is what? braid lock plat a braid lock plat now when you braid hair you can you can braid when you braid hair when you braid when if you get a let's say you get a plat right you have a a, a, a beautician and she's braiding your hair right she's giving you plats when she create one braid that's a lock when you braiding it that's why i said weavest you can weavest a plat a braid, but you can't weave us no fucking lock. I'm talking about one. I mean a dread, right? You could you could weave us a plait, right? Which makes a braid. That's locking it, and you could unlock that braid. But a fucking dread, one dread itself, one dreadlock itself, you can't we you can't weave that shit, and you can't take it. You can't un, you can't unlock a dread, but a a braid you can lock it and unlock it. When you when somebody braid your hair, once they do that first roundabout of that of that of that braid that's a lock that's what it's talking about a plat a braid a cornrow when you get french braids which is a cornrow corn one cornrow that's already locked your hair is locked it's locked into a, a braid now when your hair grow out you get new growth you unlock it to take the hair out and when you unlock it you still get you still get a uh, dead hair that come out your, your hair has to shed itself with a fucking dread you got nothing but dead hair in your head, and it's fucking dirty. No, you can use. You can, I already know what they say. Well, you can use uh, baking soda. You can use sea salt. You can use apple cider vinegar. Your hair is still fucking dirty, bro. That's you got dead hair in your hair. You got all this fucking buildup. Dreadlocks are fucking dirty. You can wash your hair all goddamn day. Your nothing but dirt is gonna come out. Dreadlocks is is not an Israelite custom. They're, 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 it's just dirty. Dirty, 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 dirty. Now, we went into the meaning of word locks. It went to braid, lock, or plait, right? Now, now that we got that out, because these guys, these guys right here are going off, okay? These guys right here are definitely going off. Now, we're going to go, and we're going to get the meaning for that, right? Now, where do... Where do dreadlocks originate from? Okay. It's a text message, but Salakia. Where do dreadlocks originate from? Let's find out. And this is the thing. 
Where do dreadlocks originate from? Anybody can Google, Google this. And there's a video that I can share too. And I'm going to share that video. It's a video that you can share too. Where a woman says dreadlocks came from India. That's where it originally came from. India. The Elamites. Right? The Indone so-called Indonesians. As you call them. They're Elamites though. That's a heathen custom. Dreadlocks. Also known as Jetta. And that's what it's originally called. It's originally called Jetta. Which they call in the English translation as dreadlocks. But it's actually called in that goddamn Hindu shit. That damn Elamite language. They call it Jetta. In, San in Sanskrit. Right? It says have been worn by people in India since the ancient times. So that's a heathen custom. That is not an Israelite custom. That is a heathen custom. Ancient times. That's a heathen custom. It says as evidenced by the earliest written references in Hindu. Hindu Ved Vedas. You can Google this. Anybody can Google this. So all that shit you talking about is an Israelite custom and all that. That's all bullshit. Everything you guys. You guys did a whole fucking two hours of, of, of straight bullshit. It gives you the date on how long dreadlocks been and where it goes back to. Look at this. It says which date back. 1500 BC in these texts, right? It says the Hindu god Shiva is depicted with Jetta, which they call an English translation as dreadlock. Okay, dreadlocks or dreadlock, but it's it's originally called Jetta. That's what it's called, which translate to the meaning of the word Jetta, twisted, right? Locks of hair or wearing knots of tangled hair in modern India. So it goes back to the Elamites. It's, it's not an Israelite custom. It is not in the Bible. The dreadlocks is not in the Bible at all. It's nowhere in the... You can't find dreadlock anywhere in the scriptures. When it says locks there, that's talking about braids or plaits. It's simple. It says holy men called sadhus, right? Still wear jetta, which is dreadlocks, right? Twisted locks of hair, right? It says... In large coils on top of their heads, believing it helps elevate consciousness and and felicitate the flow of cosmic energy. So it's dreadlocks is a heathen custom. It is not an Israelite custom. It is a heathen custom. We can read more. It says, it says right here, look at this. It says dreadlocks have also been worn by other cultures around the world, including ancient Egyptians, the Hamites, right? Buddhism monks in India, right? Warriors of New Zealand, right? The mastery tribes of East Africa. For many cultures, dreadlocks have been symbolized as spiritual connection of wisdom and community, right? Those are heathen nations, though. East Africa, those are heathen nations. Those all, all this right here is all heathen, na heathen nations here. Where did this say nothing about Israelites here? This is all heathens. That 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 wore those cuts that wore that the that, that them them damn them damn jettas, man. This is all secular. It gave us the names of who wore them. All this right here is all heathen nations, man. Monks in India. That's all those are these are all heathens here. It's not talking about Israelites. Look, history of dreadlocks, understandable is complex. The earliest written reference of locks is found in Vedic scriptures, right? It says holy Hindu texts dating back to 15 BC. Right in which Lord Shiva's hair is referred to as Jetta, a sex skirt word meaning twisted locks of hair. So that's where it goes back to. It goes back to India. It goes back to India. It is not an Israelite custom. It is not an Israelite. It's not an Israelite custom, man. Right? It is not an Israelite custom. Dreadlocks will forever be cultural statement for the black community, right? Because our people, the so-called Negroes, they take the custom of the heathen. Our people is adapted in the ways of the heathen right now. That's why they try to say that it, it's our history, it's our it's our lineage. But dreadlocks ain't got shit to do with us. It's a it's an Elamite fucking custom, man. Point blank period. His right here, Shiva, right? It says there is not one specific place that dreadlocks come from. Any region of people of African descent or thick or coarse hair has dreadlocks in their community. It says early discoveries of dreadlocks have come from places in India and Egypt. That's where it goes to, right? India and Egypt. That's a heathen custom. It says dreadlock deity Shiva has significant impact on Indian culture. The East Indians. Not the Native Americans. The East Indians. The damn Elamites. Those are fucking heathens, man. That's their custom. Right? Not an Israelite custom. That's a heathen custom. 
It says and was inspiration for millions of people that practice Hinduism. That's a heathen custom, man. Shiva is the third god in the religion of Hinduism, right? Physically described by his male body and female face. And of course, it says, of course, his beautiful long dreads, right? It says in Egypt, there are findings of ancient mummies with dreadlocks and art of featured dreadlock humans, which Egyptians are in Egypt, which is in damn Egyptians. Those are fucking Hamites. Those are heathens, too. It's not Israelites. Those are fucking heathens. It says, in fact, some mummies have been discovered with their dreadlocks still intact, right? Connected to the skull of the mummy, right? And those Egyptians, those are Hamites. Those are fucking heathens. The Indonesians, the, the Indonesians, which are the Elamites, and the fucking so-called Egyptians, those are Africans. Those are Hamites. Those ain't Israelites. Those, that's a heathen custom there. Those are heathen customs. Then you try to say that Egyptians have braids. They have fucking dreads. I'm reading they had dreads. I don't see them about having no fucking cornrows here. I'm reading this right here and it says they had dreadlocks. That's a heathen fucking custom. That's I ain't see nothing about no Egyptians here having cornrows. It says right here. It says in Egypt, right? Which are which are Hamites. In Egypt, there are fight it says there are findings of ancient mummies with dreads, dreadlocks. You see that? And are that featured dreadlock dreadlocked humans in fact some mummies have been discovered with their dreadlocks still intact connected to the skull of the mummy basically dreadlocks have been around since the beginning of man and most often are represented of powerful beings you see that it's a heathen custom though it's not israelite notice it didn't say nothing about israelites there it's a it's been around since the beginning of time for the fucking heathen nations they've been doing that not israelites israelites have not had dreads samson did not have no fucking dreads man Excuse my French, but he have had dreads. It says long hair in the ancient history represents age and wisdom. Many elderly people would have long hair, right? Within black culture, right? And black culture, they say black, like they try to put it like the so-called Negroes. Of course, they're gonna take they're gonna take heathen customs. We were in captivity, right? We were given to the to the to the heathen nations. We became heathens. But now that we have the understanding, we're in the truth. We're no longer indoctrinated with the ways of the heathen. We separated from that, right? And when it says black, it can be talking about many different because you got black people, so-called black people, right? It ain't only Negroes. You got the fucking Hamites. They're 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 dark. They're black, so-called black. They're dark, right? So you got you got Arabs. They're 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 dark. I seen dark Arabs, so-called black. So when it says black culture, it can be talking about anybody, right? But it says dreads and heavy style like braids are only way to grow your hair downwards. Salakia. Salakia, Salakia. So I'll read from the top because I forgot where I was at. It says, within the black culture, dreads and heavy styles like braids are the only way to grow your hair downwards. Otherwise, your hair would strick up like an afro. It says, dreads have always been a popular choice for people of color that want to have their hair long, which dreadlocks is a heathen custom. Okay, we about to prove that. We proved it already because we're reading it right now. Dreads in the ancient times were said to hold power. With dreadlocks, you are interlocking every everything into your hair together. Ancient humans believe hair held energy and locking it up into dreads would hold energy and increase overall energy of mental and physically. But we know, you know, long story short, dreadlocks is not an Israelite custom. I'm not going to spend this whole video reading that whole entire thing. You brothers and sisters want to dig deeper into it, you can read that entire article. But the main point is that dreadlocks is not an Israelite custom. They're coming up with their own doctrine and they're trying to put it into the scriptures. And dreads is not in the scriptures. You know, they try to say what scripture says that dreads is unlawful. You're not going to see a scripture. And this is the thing that oh, they do that with the MOTB. They, 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 they do that with the doctrine. Right. They, they do that with certain things. Right. Just for this, for example, smoking is unlawful. You got you got dudes out there. Well, where in the scripture does it say you can't smoke weed? Then you ain't gonna find a scripture that's gonna say thou shall not smoke weed. Thou shall not smoke. You're not gonna find that in the scripture. You're not gonna find the scripture where it says thou shall not have dreadlocks. You guys gotta stop being so fucking simple, man. Let's go to mean the word plat. Plat. It says to fold something, gather plates, double in narrow strips, also to braid or weave something. You see that? And I'll show you. We're going to see the difference between a, bra a braid and a dread, all right? So we're going to get a, 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 a plait. We'll get a plait, a plait, 
right? A plat braid, okay? Now, you see that? Now I'm going to show you. Let me see if I can get an image. I need an image. There's so many images. These guys got lineups. They going off just with that. But you see that right there? His 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 dread. He got a braid, Salakia. His braid is locked. You see that? It's locked. You see how it's weavest? It says weavest or braid. Now Samson said thou shall it says thou he says thou if thou weavest the seven of my locks. And when you go into the weavest, you see that? It's to braid. That's what that's talking about. You see how he got braids? His hair is locked. Because it's braided. Now with a braid, you can lock it or unlock it. Now, we're going to get you a dread. Because you got people that talk about a dread. Okay, a dread. Right? Let's see a dread lock. Let me see if I can get one dread lock. Dread lock. Now you see how... Let me see. So many... So like, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can get a close up, but I can't get no close up. So, let me see. I just need to see one dread. Okay, now this is a free form dread. You got different dreads. You got free form dreads, you got comb coil twists. And you have the other one where you do interlocking, where you don't use no product at all. You use a little syringe, and you can you can pull and snag on your hair back and forth, and they'll lock up. So you got three types of dreadlocks. You got interlocking, where they don't use no type of products at all. You got comb coil twists. Well, actually, you got four ways you can get you can get dreads. One way is you can get it free form. This is free form dreads, as you can see right here, where you just let your hair do whatever it do, and it'll lock on there. It's on. You got free form dreads. And then you got comb coil twists where you use, you use a product and then you comb coil it, right? And then you got some people, they'll start their hair hair out with, with um, uh, uh, extensions where they'll, they'll, they'll braid their end and then they'll, they'll put fake hair on top and then wrap it around and then let their hair lock like that. And then there's another way you can do it too. I think it's, uh, it's another way. I forgot the other way. But there's like four ways you can get dreadlocks. All right. Now... As you can see, one dread. You see that? You see how his hair is? You can't unlock that. Now, you can lock that, but you can't unlock it. You can lock a dread, but you can't unlock a dread. Now, a braid, you can... A braid... A braid, you can lock it and unlock it. You can't You can't weave this to one dread. You see that? You can't weave this to one dread. You can't braid one dread, red, one dread by itself. You can't braid this shit. But with one braid, you can you can weave this thing, and you can un, you can lock it and unlock it. You can untangle it, which is unlocking it, and you can lock it with a braid. With a dread, one dread, you can lock it, but you can't unlock it. You either gotta you gotta cut that shit out. So hey, long story short, I'm not gonna keep it long. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep this lesson long. Like I said before, these guys right here. So they did this lesson four years ago, but I'm still doing the lesson on it. And you got they're pushing a doctrine that says you can have dreads, okay? And we know dreadlocks is not an Israelite custom. It is not. It is not an Israelite custom. You got these guys, sons of thunder. They're going off on the scriptures, and they're teaching that you can have dreadlocks. Dreadlocks is not an Israelite custom, man. Okay? It is not an Israelite custom. We proved it. We went into the little bit of the blue letter. We went into the entomology of it. We got the scriptures out. Right. And we went into the secular history. So I don't know where he's talking about where he's mentioning right here that uh, 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 he said Egyptians had cornrows. Well, I went to the secular history. It said they had dreads. It didn't say they had no fucking cornrows. So these guys are just coming up with their own interpretation of the scriptures. All right. You can't be following all these Hebrew Israelite groups. So, hey, man, Lord willing, lessons that are fine. On to the next one. Shalom.